If you decide to resist against an armed robber, you gotta recognize that does come with risks. If you wanna keep your shooting skills primed, you have to regularly dry fire. Manus X is the best dry fire tool available to help you to stay sharp all the time. I use it every week. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Trinidad and Tobago. Here we're going to see an armed robbery with multiple robbers that unfortunately does not end well. So we see this guy coming out of the restaurant here and a guy comes up with a balaclava on or you know or some kind of one with a gun in his hand and goes inside now you're gonna see here our you know our victim's gonna be like oh that's kind of interesting and, and he thinks about it he puts his bottle down there his beverage and is gonna go back in for a second and get them but his mom is on the other side as well now there's a second attacker who is not gonna let him go here in this moment, is instead gonna start frisking him down. Now one of the things that you're gonna notice here is he's frisking him down as this lady comes up, news story says that that's the, the victim's mom, and she has a bottle as well, and when he's gonna decide to go after the guy, she's gonna try to get him with the bottle as well. But of course that's gonna start quite some noise. We see it from another angle as she's trying to get after him with the bottle, and of course he doesn't wanna get hit with that. And that alerts this, the other armed robber as well. He's going to come over and actually going to use the firearm as they're trying to uh, protect themselves from him as well. Mom is actually going to get shot in the arm on this one. You see her lay it down there. News story says that she was shot in the arm, but will make a recovery. But that at least drives these guys off. And you're going to see the son now, again, come back out and try to figure out, wait, is he going to go and go after these guys or whatever? And he decides not to. That's where this one ends. Tough stuff all the way around, but I think important for us to see and to learn some lessons from. Out of this one, I have a poll question for you. Does this kind of video make you want to work on your empty-handed skills more, or does it just make you think compliance is almost always the best answer? Hit that poll. Let me know what you think. I think that both are kind of in the thing, but it does make me really think that my empty-handed skills need to be high so that I can make that decision in the moment. I want to think about some significant lessons out of this one, including knowing when the right time to launch a counter ambush is, about the danger of multiple attackers, and why we say spiritual fitness is so important. In the beginning of this one, friends, I think from an attitude perspective, I just encourage you not to be nonchalant with somebody who's pointing a gun in your face, man. Just, hey, get a hand in the air or whatever, but take that very seriously. And I know in some places violence is an everyday part of life, and so people chill out around it, but still, that's not you know, an awesome way to deal with it. Secondly, he's kind of heading back in, puts his, you know, his drink down, whatever, and now there's a second one. Oh boy, always beware of the trailing accomplice. Always be aware of the second attacker, friends. And that's why awareness, even in the midst of an attack, so incredibly important. Now, this guy's mama's gonna come up here. When you add a second person in there, now you gotta really think about what the best thing to do is here. And he decides to go after the guy. Now, I'm not positive what that trigger is, but as we go over and we think about it, you notice that when he decides to go here, he decides in that moment, Moment that he is going to try to drive through the attacker to get to the hand with the gun in it. I can't tell you enough, the proper time to launch an ambush is when you can radically overwhelm your foe. When you can gain the upper hand, get their tool out of there, and if you have to go all the way through him to get to the gun, not a great time. You really want to wait, if at all possible, until you can get to the tool without having to go all the way through him. Sometimes you can't if he's killing people or if he's decided he's going to use it and you can see that, but if you can, now that's the right time to do that. Now notice that his mama here is going to use that bottle in her hand and she wants to, to beat on that guy with it. And that's great. Using an improvised tool, if that's the only thing that you have right now, is great. But recognize he has an incredibly long distance tool. Most people don't have a whole lot of training with that. You can see that she doesn't. She's got a great attitude, but maybe not a whole lot of skills. But you got to recognize if you're going to get after it with that, you got to close the distance. And of course, he is going to try to avoid that. And he tries to keep the son, the guy in the pink there, between him and the threat from the mom. That's something that you're going to have to work around and learn how to work together as a team. Notice you're just not going to get any kind of hit on that. And, and, and again, trying to get in there and get some empty-handed skills is very important. Now, I also want to think about, is it wise to launch a counter ambush against multiples like that if you know that both of them are armed? If you don't have a tool on you of your own, you're probably not a best bet unless you really feel strongly that you can take the first guy's gun away from him and then use it against the second guy. Because if you don't have a tool of your own, you know that his buddy is going to come back after you and try to rescue his buddy using his firearm. So you got to really put that calculus into play while you're thinking. Thankfully, again, uh, mom was shot here. That's not thankful. I'm not thankful for that at all, but thankful she wasn't shot and killed, but she was hit in the arm. So, a couple of things here. Number one, emotional fitness. You notice that when she gets shot through the arm, she just lays down. I can't tell you enough. You got to actually be willing to continue to fight, and that means making steps to protect yourself even if you're shot. 
Also want to think here about spiritual fitness because the, the master key to spiritual fitness is taught to me by Skip Hancock is courage and the willingness to continue to fight. And of course, when we say spiritual fitness, we always say you want to say what you need to say to your loved ones and make sure your relationship with Jesus was strong because, boy, she was within a few inches here losing her life. But thankfully, she did make it through this one. So the emotional fitness component and the master key of courage here, incredibly important as well. Now, let's think about the sun coming back out here. And rather than chasing these guys, now's the time to get after your first aid skills and have some first aid equipment on you, some things to stop the bleed, and some skills in order to help mom to get her to the hospital. So... Lots of lessons out of this one about the before the attack, about during the attack, when to launch the counter ambush, how to launch the counter ambush, to make sure that you have the skill set to do so all the way through to cover your ASP.